Imagine if everyday life had visual effects. What's up ladies and gents? All right, today we're talking about two ways to do some crazy cool line animations in Adobe After Effects. Now, there's good news and bad news. Which one do you guys want first? And I just realized nobody's gonna be able to answer that. So I'll give you the bad news first. Bad news is, it is time consuming. Doing this effect looks really awesome as you saw in the intro, but it takes time to do. The good news is though, very easy, super easy. In terms of all the After Effects crazy stuff you could do, this is among the easiest. And yes, it does take a while to do, but the amount of learning curve involved is literally nothing. So you can get right on your horse and make cool, crazy light animations before you know it. Now, before we get into the tutorial for the glowing sort of like flames and crazy effects, you're gonna have to go over to Video Copilot and download a plugin for After Effects called Saber, completely free. I will link it in the description below. It just has a whole bunch of variety in terms of visual effects. Like it's not just a straight glowing line. You can have fire, you can have lightning, smoke, all these cool things. Quick, free, easy download. Like I said, links in the description. You're gonna need it moving forward. Now let's get into it. Alrighty, let's get into method number one using the Video Copilot plugin Saber. Make sure you download and install that. Link is in the description. Totally free, by the way. Okay, so we've got our footage in Adobe After Effects. You just import your, your footage, make a new composition. And there's a couple steps you have to follow, but I'm telling you, really straightforward. So we're just gonna bang this out real quick. So the way I have my After Effects set up, I've got my files in the bottom right corner. You're gonna right click underneath and go to New, Solid. Now, when you're pulling up a new solid, the default is gray. You're gonna to wanna to change that color to black. Here's why. Click OK, and you've got black over your footage. Now, you can't see anything, you don't know what you're working on, that's not gonna work. You're gonna right click that layer, go to blending mode, and screen. Once you change it to screen, you've got full view of everything underneath, perfect. If you do it gray, it's gonna gray out your footage. So, change it to black, and now we've got a surface to work on. The next thing we're gonna do is go up to the top here and hit this pen tool, which is also G on the keyboard. Doing this is gonna create a mask, which we'll need later on when we're dealing with the plugin. So let's zoom in and for the sake of what we're working on, let's say I wanna highlight the hat. So what I'm gonna do is draw a mask all the way around the hat. Okay, now we've got a mask around the hat. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to the right side under effects and presets, if you've installed Saber, you can type in Saber and it'll come up. All you're gonna do is drag it onto that black solid layer, boop, and that light Saber's gonna come up right down the middle. Doesn't look right, right? Don't worry, we're getting there. On the left side here, did I say right before? I meant left side. On the left side is where I have all my footage, okay. Whew. Um, so on the left side, you've got your effect controls right here and you can see Saber, Enable Glow, Glow Color. 
By the way guys, I'm not going to get into it because there are thousands of parameters, but once you've got the basics down, you could play with it to no end and make all kinds of cool combinations. Keep that in mind when you're learning all this stuff. I'm not going to coach you through that because like it's just trial and error. Play with it, what works, what doesn't, what do I like, what do I not like. Anyway, I digress. You're going to go down here to customize core. So the core is the actual beam of light itself, the glow is what you're seeing around it. Now under core type it says saber, makes sense. You're gonna change that to layer mask. Boom. Just like that, it's outlining whatever mask you've applied to this. So in our case, I traced my hat, now it's an outline. Cool thing about Saber now is if you want a glowing line, it's already there. You can play with the sliders, make it glow more, make it glow less, but you can do some awesome stuff. For example, there's a whole drop down of wicked effects and you don't even have to do anything to them. That's the beauty of it. It's just there on its own. Electric, for example. Look at that, we've got a crazy electrical field around the hat. Let's just play that back, see what it looks like. Damn, that is cool. So you can pick and choose from any of them. One of the things that I like to take a look at too is down at the bottom here, you've got your render settings, alpha mode, disabled. So you can mask the core which is the light itself, the actual like beam of light that traced around your thing, or you can mask the glow, and that sort of masks the outer and it keeps that hard glowing line there, which is cool as well. Or you can enable mask and it'll do both. This is really cool if you want your beams of light to look like they're inside an object or surrounding it. So right now it looks like it's inside the hat. If we click invert mask, Boom, it's on the outside of the hat and my hat looks like it's glowing. It's pretty badass looking. You can also animate these lines. And again, I'm not gonna go too far into detail because it's just, you know, drop down, make a keyframe, and you just play with the parameters that are in the Saber plugin. For example, just a quick one here. You've got your start and stop offset. So we're gonna drop this down, open up effects, Saber, and you can see all of the same features that are on the upper left are now down here on our timeline so we can make keyframes to make things happen. We're gonna open up the customized core and here's what you're gonna play with. Start offset, this is really cool. So if you make a keyframe at the beginning here, start offset, let's go to the beginning of the footage. Make a keyframe for start offset and then drag it along your timeline and right now the start offset is at zero. Drag it along your timeline and then slide it to 100 and then play it back and you'll see the light kind of like disappears so it animates itself very simple instead of having to go through and like erase or hide or mask that whole line until you got it the way you do you just set the start offset to 100 or 0 and it'll automatically do it for you now you can add more keyframes and go 100 to 0 back to 100 and it'll just reanimate it's really cool really simple again you guys play with it and fool around with it and see what all kinds of crazy combos and lightning and fire you can do and you can mix them all up and mix and match them. Really cool stuff and super easy. Now this one's not that time consuming. It is how much you wanna play with it and push things along. Yeah, that's up to you. You could spend probably days on, you know, five seconds of footage making it absolutely wicked, but I think it would be worth it. Now, moving on to option number two. Option number two is more for the people who aren't as comfortable with After Effects, but you know, you can still find your way around using it. It's not, I know After Effects is very intimidating, but option number two is an even easier method using the brush tool. You're basically painting in your animation. For this second option, what you're gonna start by doing is duplicating your layer. So, you have your layer selected. You're gonna hit Command or Control D on your keyboard, PC or Mac and it's gonna duplicate that layer. Now, double click that layer because in order to paint, you need to be working in the actual file and not the composition. Just double click it. Honestly, listen to me, I'm not gonna steer you guys wrong. Then, you're gonna to go to the top left and select the brush tool. So far, pretty straightforward. On the right side, in the paint tab, you have duration, single frame, constant, right on, custom. You're gonna to wanna to have single frame selected. I don't think that's what it's selected by default. Make sure you select single frame. RBG, RBG, RGBA, and mode normal. From here, all you're gonna do is you're gonna go frame by frame and paint what you want. So, 
if we want a line to trace around my hat as I'm walking towards it, you're just gonna paint on the start and just keep adding. So we've got a little line. Pro tip, here's a little quick shortcut. Page up, page down. That cycles between previous frame, next frame, okay? So I would keep your fingers on page up, page down because that's gonna help a lot. What you're gonna wanna do is check what you've drawn, go page down and continue the drawing. So we've got that little white line where it will hit page down and you see it disappears, you're just gonna have to redraw it again and extend it a little further. So page up, page down. Page down again, extend that line a little bit further. Page up, page down, you can see the progress you're making. Page down, it's blank, extend that line a little further. Page down, repeat the process until you're numb. This is what I was talking about, why it takes a long time. Yes, it's like the dumbed down version of the previous method. So if you're better with keyframing, you'll save a lot of time. But this way, it's almost foolproof and you can just make cool animations, but it does take you a little bit longer. So we're just gonna repeat that process until the hat is fully traced. All right, so now that our hat is fully traced, we can play that back and you can see what it looks like. It's a really quick animation. Zoop. So it just traces the hat. It's kind of got that like shaky sketch feel to it, but it's not glowing like the rest of it. So if you wanted to do that as an animation where just the white lines trace around an object or you know they could be like moving around your arms or around your body or if there's like a quick motion you can shoot out and stuff like that, get creative with it. If you want to do that, you're set. All you do is export the footage Done. Now, it doesn't glow like the rest, so we're gonna add a little bit of glow to this one. Unfortunately, we don't have the freedom that we did with the saber effect, but there is a like a halfway solution. At the upper left side, where you, effects and presets where you typed in saber, now you're gonna type in glow. And all you're gonna do is drag glow onto that layer that you just drew on. Now you'll notice that everything is kind of blown out. We don't want that. So, in the effect controls, under paint, you have a little checkbox that says paint on transparent. Select that, boom, everything except for what you've painted with the paintbrush disappears, and now you can just adjust the settings as per your liking. If you go down, you can add more glow, less glow, and here's what I like to do. Under glow colors, it says original colors. We don't want that because it's just white. If you're going for a white glow, you don't have to do any work. It's done for you. But, let's say you want to change it. So you're gonna go A and B colors, and if you go down a little bit further, I'm sure you guys, if you're following along, you've already seen this. I don't know why I'm pointing it out like it's hidden. It's right there, color A and color B. So we want our glow to be, let's say, red in this case, that DM red, woo, love it, okay? So you can see by changing color A, the actual glow around the hat has adjusted a little bit. It's got like this faint little red glow. We're gonna change color B to red as well. Again, you can play around, mix and match, do your own thing, mix red and blue and green and yellow, whatever you want. Now, you can see it's still primarily white with just a little bit of red. That can be fixed by changing the amount of glow, the glow radius, how, like, how fine it is or how bright it is, and the glow intensity. So if we bring that intensity right up, she's glowing now, I'll tell ya. We're gonna play that back. Cool. All right, all right. And that's step number two. Once you're happy with the glowing and tracing that you've done, again, you're not limited to like just tracing objects. You could actually create animations like a spider web shooting out of your hand if you're pretending to be Spider-Man or like a crazy pattern that appears on your shirt. It's all in your hands to be as creative as you guys possibly can be. I'm just giving you guys the tools to get there. If there's a piece of wood in front of you with a nail, I'm just giving you the hammer. You gotta nail it. You gotta nail it, and I'm sure you will nail it. That's all there is to it, folks. Again, push it as far as you want. If you found it helpful, comment down below. Dan, I loved it. If you have any questions, comment down below. Dan, I have questions. I'll try to answer them. Like the video, hit that subscribe button if you are not already subscribed, so you can join the DM gang. Is that a thing, DM gang? Well, we'll make it a thing, DM gang. So you can join the DM gang, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Love ya! super easy for the record guys that like minute introduction took like eight hours for me to do I'm not proud of it but it's the truth it's gonna take a while but you guys could get really good at it and then just
crush like a half hour video in 15 minutes because you're a beauty like that. I believe in you. And now I'm just ranting.